Hello and welcome everyone to another episode of the Cephas Health Recovery Podcast. I am really, really excited to share this with you. The three key essential things you must have in order to recover. Been doing this work for a long time and I've seen a lot of commonalities over 14 years. And, you know, even if I backtrack 17 years ago when I was actually going through this recovery process myself, there were really three key essentials that without them, I simply wouldn't have recovered. And so frankly, I want to share this with you because I think this work is very, very powerful. And if you just get these three things, it's going to make a hell of a lot of sense. So let's do it. What are the three key essentials that you must need in order to recover? They might be a little bit controversial and you might be going, what's he talking about here? And so I'm going to get up on my iPad. If you're watching this on video, you'll be able to see this. The key three. And so I want you to imagine a triangle. And Ultimately, there are three aspects to this, and you will see in a moment the process behind this. This is kind of like a model and, you know, pretty powerful one. So the three are this. Number one is behavior, and we're going to do a deep dive into this, so it'll make a lot more sense. So number one is behavior. Number two is belief, and we're going to be talking about belief and beliefs and by the way this isn't like a mindset thing where it's like oh you got to think yourself better or pretend that you're totally fine no hopefully you know that we don't believe in that stuff we're all about you know having a holistic approach and making sure that you're doing the right things at the right time and so i want to go deeper into this because i'll explain to you what i'm talking about in terms of what belief slash beliefs mean and number three is environment and you might be going what the hell is toby morrison talking about environment that's the top three things that i need to recover what's he talking about let's break it down right now so in order to recover you have to have three things you have to have certain behaviors that help you move forwards and get healthy now listen to this you can't heal from an illness with the same behaviors that got you there in the first place you can't heal from your illness with the same behaviors that got you there in the first place. Now, I'm not saying that it's your fault. I'm not saying that you did it on purpose. Some of you might not even know how you got here. A lot of you do though. A lot of our members come, oh my God, it makes so much sense. I was pushing myself way beyond my means. I had no boundaries. I was always there for everyone else and not myself. I didn't look after myself. You know, I got a virus, I got an infection. I had lots of different things happen in my life and it was kind of the perfect storm, so to speak as to why I'm experiencing this illness. And for some of you, that might not resonate at all, but I know for a lot of you, you're probably nodding your head going, yeah, well, it kind of made sense. You know, I was probably going way beyond my means and I didn't really listen to my body and I kind of took my life for granted and, and not really being true to myself, so to speak. I'm always trying to prove something. You know, we've got a lot of type A personalities and perfectionists and it all kind of ties in together. It's not just one thing. It's never just one thing. We've noticed that with thousands of clients over the years. It's never just one thing. It's usually a combination of things that get there. But in order to recover, there are a set of behaviors that you need to apply, embody and do on the daily in order to move forwards. There's a certain set of behaviors and patterns that you can do that actually keep you stuck, right? They don't help you at all. They hinder you. And so what we need to do is really identify well, what are the behaviors that one who recovers does? What do they do? What do they do in order to get healthy and feel good again and start to live again? What did Mitchell do? How does he behave? How does he show up every single week, every single day? How does he show up towards him and his life in order to get the results that he's got? Because there are people, and you might be one of them right now, who is sitting here going, I'm not feeling good, I'm getting worse, I'm struggling. Well, what are the behaviors that you're doing that are creating that experience for you? You know, a lot of people will go, oh, I you know, but you tried the supplements and then you tried the, the doctor and the psychologist and then you're going to try an alternative therapy and all these things that you're doing, trying to find someone or something to fix you. And I'm going to tell you the quickest fix right now, the fastest quick fix that I can actually 100% hand on heart say that works is doing the work. Like he's doing what we're going to be talking about today and obviously way more. It, it, there's more context to it, but 
That's the fastest quick fix. The slowest quick fix that will never work is you trying to find someone or something to fix you. And frankly, it just doesn't work. We've said it time and time again, and that's why people come to us in the end. They go, oh my God, this makes so much sense. I've been going around to merry go rounds and circles for the last 10, 20, 30 years. And now all of a sudden, this makes sense. So behavior is number one, and they all work intertwined with each other. Number two is belief slash beliefs. And this is really important because... If you believe that it's not possible for you, chances are you're not going to behave in a way that you need to or will in order to move forwards and recover. The people that believe that it's not possible for them aren't doing anything for their recovery. The people who do believe that it's possible for them are doing something for their recovery. For example, Mitchell, who just got win of the week this week, he believes or believed that it's possible for him to get better. So what did he do for the last year? He worked on changing his behaviors that move and model him towards getting healthy and living again. And what did he get as a result of that? He started to get better and do more living. So we really need to identify what are the beliefs that are limiting me and holding me back from my recovery? Do I actually believe it's possible for me or am I creating stories? And here's the kick up. You will know whether what you're believing is good or not because you will either be really open and receptive to possibility or you'll be really close to it. And if you're really close to it, it basically means that you're not believing that it's possible for you. And so there's a big gap. There's a gap between literally going backwards and, and staying stuck because you're believing that, you know, it's just a genetic, it's in my genes, I can't get better, I'm too old. We see it all. We've got clients who are in their 80s. We've got clients who are in their 50s. We've got single mothers and they're getting better, right? I've had clients who have the most complex chronic illness diagnosis I've ever seen. I'm talking two pages full of complex diagnosis and they got better. And ultimately, fundamentally, it comes down to those two things, behavior and belief and belief and behavior. What you believe will then play out in your behavior. And so we need to really identify, well, what is it? Am I open to it? You know, maybe I don't fully believe it yet, but am I even open to the possibility of it? And what would that be like for me? And I also want to say that, you know, it can be scary and I get it. I have a lot of people go, yeah, but Toby, I've, I've been hopeful before and I've been, I'm really looking forward to saying that it didn't work and then it made me even more upset and more sad and disappointed and you know now i'm too scared to even believe that it's possible or to even have any hope my offer to you is was it false hope you know like were you putting your recovery in the hands of someone or something outside of yourself chances are yes so that was the case this is different this is different because you're actually holding the keys to your recovery and what you do on a daily basis is what determines the results of your life and your reality this is why this is so important. You might be thinking, oh, Toby, it's so simple. Like, show me the science. Show me the science. I'll show you the science. This will improve your sleep. This will improve your strength and stamina. This will increase your immune system. This will actually increase your mitochondria cells on a cellular level. But to be honest, that shit doesn't matter. What matters is the practicality of what you're doing every single day. We can talk about science all day long. The best thing a client said to me recently, she's like, you know what I love about your program? It just works. I don't have to do any thinking. I just do it and I get results, right? And if you're showing up like that, it's going to be awesome. But if you're showing up and you're going, well, I'm not sure if this is going to work for me. And oh, this is just another thing I'm going to try. And, you know, oh, I'd like a quick fix. <laughs> Toby, give me a pill. <laughs> But how much are you consuming just on information? You do not want to continue to be consumed by more content and more content and not do anything with it. There's a difference between knowing and there's a difference between doing. And the difference is, at the end of the day, the results that you have. Oh, Toby, I know all this. Are you doing it? Are you applying it? Are you waking up every day fully committed to your recovery? And one of the favorite things and, and the most important thing that I actually think that, again, is going to help you with behavior and beliefs, and this is number three, is environment. Because your environment is what you're surrounding yourself with on a daily basis. What are you listening to? What is that making you believe? What are you surrounded by when you wake up in the morning? What are you looking for? And sometimes in our program, especially on our initial welcome call for our new members every single month when members join, we talk about environment and we talk about success identity and success mentality. And basically there's two different ideas that we can model. One is the success identity where we look for what we want and what we really believe in. So for example, if someone's doing really, really well, and obviously every single week inside our program, our members share a win from the week. And let's say a client like Mitchell just shares an amazing win, like, oh my God, I went to a football grand final, it was amazing. 
And then, you know, another member sees that and goes, yes, that's amazing. Congratulations. Like, tell me what you did to get there. That's amazing. That's a success mentality because that person is bringing themselves closer to what they want. The other and opposite is basically pushing yourself away from success and what you truly want. And so that's when you would reject, you would compare, and you would push yourself against. And so if you saw the same person, you're in that mentality, you'd be like, oh yeah, but that person's younger or they didn't have it as bad as me. Oh, that's so unfair. And so that's not really that helpful either. Yeah, it's not really bringing yourself closer to success. So environment is really important. Who you're surrounding yourself with, even this podcast, like it's super important. This is a proactive thing that you're doing. Yeah, there's no complaining. There's no conversations around anything that's not proactive at safe as hell. So this is a perfect example of putting yourself in an environment that's fundamentally going to help shift you and move you forwards. Now, I know for a lot of people, home environment's really important too. For some of you, you have really good support, but we know a lot of people don't. We have a lot of members who don't get support from their family. In fact, we just run a loved ones workshop for all our members, family, friends, loved ones, spouses, and it was just for them. Members couldn't join. It was just for the loved ones because we wanted to make sure that we can help them connect with our members who are actually going through the process of recovery so they can one be connected but two be supported and uh, it was phenomenal like there was tears and joy and like oh my god like this is so much more helpful to navigate this with this person rather than me hindering their recovery and you know most people do give out of love but sometimes that way of giving is worry and you don't need more worry and so you want to make sure that you're putting yourself in an environment a set of environments that are going to help you online and offline the predominantly online because you know we've got people in 53 countries in our program and so you're probably in europe you're in australia you're in asia who knows where you are israel mexico we've got people everywhere yeah and so you're online a lot of the time you're watching youtube videos you're on instagram so the people that you follow the content that you consume the coaching that you're getting the things that you're investing in the books the programs the courses the coaching the mentorship all that stuff matters When I was going through recovery many years ago, before online was a thing, I used to read blog articles from a guy called Craig Harper, and he ended up becoming my mentor. I actually ended up working under his umbrella after I recovered, which was just crazy. And we're still good friends today. I actually was on his podcast not long ago, but he's a motivational speaker. He's been around for almost 60 years now. He's been doing this work for over 30, and... I consumed his content like nothing else. I put myself in that winner's environment. He always spoke about attitude. He spoke about you being in control of the 24 hours that you've got every single day. What can you do? And so that really helped me propel. And I remember I basically made a goal. I was like, I want to be the Craig Harper for the people who are struggling with chronic illness and basically help them even more than what Craig was able to help me with. And so big shout out to Craig Harper. Love you. You're amazing. But you can see here, if we're looking at this triangle, you see the cycle, put yourself in a good environment, it'll help you change your behavior. If you're in a shitty environment, you're not being supported, you're not putting yourself in a winning situation, you're still going to leak behaviors that don't actually serve you and that you don't actually want, which is going to give you the reality of the results that you don't want either. But if you put yourself in a winning environment, one that uplifts you, and whether that's through our free Facebook group or reading good articles, YouTube channel, or investing in our program, whatever it is, yeah, you're putting yourself in a place of uplifting yourself. That will then have a direct reflection of the behavior that you choose to do. And that will then solidify the belief of what you want and what you're doing. And so it's a great cycle to be in, or a vicious cycle to be in, depending on what environment you're in, what behaviors you're doing, and what you're believing. And here's the coolest thing. Personally, the reason why I love our program so much is because we have a group of like-minded people who are on the same trajectory of recovery. And I don't think the coaching is the most powerful thing, although a lot of breakthroughs happen, a lot of aha moments happen when we do our group coaching sessions every single week with our members. But personally, I think the biggest thing that people get the biggest breakthroughs from is being in the environment that helps see others behaving in a way that they wish to it helps people see oh my god that person just went for a run and they feel totally fine afterwards so eventually that will be possible for me and so it's closing the gap from where you're at to where you want to be 
And so putting yourself in those situations is going to be the fastest way for you to move forwards to where you want to be. It's the power of proximity. And I say this all the time to our members. I'm like, you can't underestimate the power of proximity. The power of proximity basically says that who I surround myself with, I become, right? Who I surround myself with, I become. And what you're doing is you're putting yourself in possibility. And the other coolest part about that is being part of a group and being in that kind of environment, there's lots of sharing going on. So it's like, hey, I'm doing this and it's working. Or, hey, I'm here and this is what I did to get there. And so that is proximity. That is the power of proximity and the fastest way to get to where you want. So if we break it down, like I said, on this triangle, we've got environment shapes behavior, behavior shapes belief. Now, of course, this could go in the opposite direction too where it could go, I'm changing my beliefs, which is going to help me change my behavior. And then it's going to help change my environment too. And so, you know, they all go hand in hand. Again, it could be I'm changing my behavior, which is changing my beliefs. And it's going to then change my environment as well. So where in your life are you stretched in terms of the big missing gap? Like, is it environment that you need to change? What you're focusing on, what you're investing in, where you're spending your time, energy, and money? Is it behavior? Is it like you just need help with behavior and you need to have that accountability with what you need to do? Remember I said the fastest quick fix is to do the work. Honestly, I see it time and time again. And, you know, you got to see the wins. It's just crazy. People going on swims, going on holidays, having babies when they were told they weren't be able to have a baby, writing books. Got one lady at the moment, I can't wait to get her on the podcast, who has started a business teaching other people how to write their best selling book and she's got her own podcast and i just love what she's doing she's got like six kids and when she came to us she tried everything and she was really in a bad way and now she's living her life fully and so you know you really just gotta ask yourself like what's limiting me is it the environment is it the behaviors is it the beliefs or is it all three or is it two or is it one and then what are you going to do about it you need to make a plan What's the plan based off this current problem and situation that you've got? And from there, I want you to start doing it. So we're going to leave this little image up. If you're watching this on video, key three are environment, behavior, and beliefs. And they're either helping you or hindering you. And my question is, what do you need to do in order to get on the green line and move forwards? If you're in an environment that you don't like, that's not serving you, if you're doing behaviors that aren't helpful or useful, and it's not your fault, don't beat yourself up for being in this cycle that unfortunately the system is geared against you the system tells you oh just try this and i'll oh, try this next quick thing and oh try this thing it's like there's so many buzzwords it's like do this do that it's literally making you avoid the thing that you actually just need to focus on for a longer period of time everyone wants overnight success but overnight success is usually years and years and years of work and then all of a sudden you're an overnight success and like mitchell going to the grand final if he did so many mini steps in order to get to that point of really enjoying that fruit of what he's created that you know it can't be overlooked the work just doing the work and showing up and again just repeating this cycle over and over and over again of environment behavior beliefs Shifting your environment to suit where you want to go. Shifting your behaviors to where you want to go. Shifting your beliefs to be more, do more, live more, and experience more. So I'm going to leave it there. You're either on the red line or you're on the green line. And ultimately, it's your choice. Green line is moving you towards what you want. Red line is drifting you towards more of what you don't want. And time compounds everything. So you want to make sure that you get on that green line. And being on this podcast, listening to this right now, is getting on that green line. If you're listening to this on YouTube or if you're listening to this on Facebook, I want you to write, what are you choosing? Green line or red line? Type it in right now. I want to see it in the chat. Write this down in a journal. Write this model down. Environment, behavior, bliss. What do I need to change? And what am I choosing? Am I going to choose the green line for myself or am I going to just stay on the red line and suffer unnecessarily? You don't need to suffer the way you're suffering. It doesn't need to be this hard. What we want to do is take complexity to calm. We want to simplify things so you can start to move forwards. What you're going through is extremely hard. It's extremely difficult. It's extremely complex. You do not need more complexity with what is already so complex. You need to break it down and you need to simplify. I hope this has shifted your awareness. I hope it's really helped you. I really want you to look at that gap and then go, how can I close it? How can I close that gap? As always, thank you so much for listening. 
I hope it's been of value. Let us know your biggest takeaway. I'd love to know. What was your biggest takeaway from today's session for you? It's going to be different and I'm really curious and keen to see what it is for you will spark conversation in the chat box. All the best for now and we'll speak to you very, very soon. Bye for now.